originally from Texas. You know, at least that's where she went to university. <laughs> and now she's involved out here in a South Coast Medical Center for new medicine located in, in Tustin. She will speak on Syndrome X, Diabetes and Cancer. Dr. Lynn Aaron Keneally. Thank you. Okay. Is it on? Oh, it is on. Welcome, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'd like to thank the Cancer Control Society for inviting me. My name is Lee Aaron Keneally. I'm a medical doctor. My practice is in Tustin, California. And I work with four other medical practitioners. And our practice consists of doing almost anything. We treat everything from cold to cancer. We conventionally work a patient up in the conventional medical diagnostic workup, but we tend to treat our patients with integrative therapies. And integrative therapies, as most of you know, could include anything from nutrition to homeopathy to herbs, acupuncture, energetic treatments. I have an ancillary staff of a nutritionist, bioenergetic technicians, and all kinds of people that do other things uh, to help me do my job. And today, I am going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and I think a, a subject that is probably not well, not well informed by the public of the serious nature um, of these illnesses. And that is, go back, um, uh, syndrome X, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and how it relates to cancer. And my, on, the, on the slide, the, there is my mission. My goal is to empower and educate individuals and their families to help them to achieve the maximum lifespan with the highest quality of health, with the highest quality of health throughout, feeling great, looking great, with high energy levels and high spirits. So everyone knows that there's a cancer epidemic, but there is a lesser known epidemic called metabolic syndrome, also known as insulin resistance and syndrome X. And the CDC estimates that 47 million Americans have metabolic syndrome. So what are the group of risk factors? Well, increase in abdominal fat, high LDL, low HDL and high triglycerides. There's new blood pressure measurements that used to be 130 over 90, now the new blood pressure is 120 over 80. High fibrinogen and high elevated C-reactive protein. So typically the disease starts out as metabolic syndrome, goes to prediabetes and then diabetes. So what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone made by the beta cells in the pancreas, and your body breaks down food into glucose, and glucose is the cell's main energy source, and it cannot use glucose without insulin. But when you have insulin resistance, the muscles, cells, the fat cells, liver cells cannot use insulin properly. And so, since the body still needs insulin to bring the blood sugars down, the pancreas keeps going on this revolving process of producing more and more insulin, and eventually it can't keep up and glucose is surrounds and floods the cell. So what is the definition really? If you have an elevated level, in our, in our clinic we use an elevated level, if you have a fasting blood sugar of 99 or above, you're basically considered diabetes. We usually use other, we sometimes do fasting insulins and we do another test called a hemoglobin A1C, which reflects your blood sugar over 90 days. And in tests from 1988 to 1994, 40% of U.S. adults had prediabetes, over 40 million people. And most people diagnosed with prediabetes developed type 2 diabetes in 10 years 
unless they change their lifestyle. Diabetes is typically diagnosed with a fasting blood sugar on two occasions of 140 milligrams per deciliter. Also, they will present with clinical symptoms of fatigue, excessive thirst, excessive urination, and weight loss. And as I mentioned earlier, the hemoglobin A1C test that we do, our cutoff is 5.7, and most labs today are embracing those same numbers. So there's three types of diabetes. Type 1, also called juvenile or insulin-dependent diabetes. Body does not make insulin because of some uh, immune system or chemicals destroy the pancreas beta cells. Type 2 is the most common, also called adult onset, and it develops from insulin resistance. The type 3 is gestational diabetes caused by hormone changes and maybe also dietary changes as well as many other uh, in factors. It usually goes away, but it's a risk factor for type 2 diabetes later in life. Over 13 million Americans are diagnosed with diabetes. Most, the people who have diabetes that are walking around, 50% don't know they have it. And this is one of the most unfortunate uh, statistics. One out of every three Americans born after the year 2000 will develop diabetes. Obesity is a major cause of type 2 diabetes, and 80% of diabetics are obese. Diabetes is a leading cause of death. Men diagnosed with diabetes at age 40 will lose an average of 11.6 years. Women will lose an average of 14.3 years. 